We're surprising my sister with a garden install in three hours. Are we going to make it? We're going to do it. Growing joy. Hey friends, I'm Maria, your new best plant friend. I'm here to help you grow joy in your life while caring for plants. And we have a very special guest today, Mama Fiella. Hey. You might know her from various viral funny reels that we've made on Instagram, but my mom is an amazing gardener. And we are passing our green thumb down to my sister. My sister is my best friend. She lives here in Florida and she's eight months pregnant. They had this dream that they wanted to install a garden farm, but when you're pregnant, sometimes things get away from you. So I surprised her last night. I flew in from New York. Hi, I wasn't gonna miss your baby shower. Surprise! And I have another surprise for you. What? Well, Billy's here. And then I have a third surprise for you. What? We're doing a full garden install tomorrow. Gardener sent you all the boxes. As FOMA sent all the What? Flowers. Proven winner sent the flowers. Me with the video. <laughs> That, I saw all that soil coming in. I was like, oh boy, that's for the, I was thinking that that was for the project outside. No, it's for you. <laughs> and then we have a car full of plants. We just went shopping for you. And they're all pink because it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Oh my God. And I want to say a quick thank you to our partners who have supplied all of the amazing soil, plants, and containers for, yes, exactly. My mom has become an Espoma Organic model. So thank you, Espoma Organic, for sending all the soil. Thank you, Gardener Supply Company, for supplying the containers and Proven Winners for supplying these amazing heart-shaped plants. So mom, what is your impression of Allie and her level of green thumb? Do you think she's going to be able to handle a full garden? Yes, I do. Here in Florida, it's a very different type of garden. It's hot. Yeah. And you have to get down on your knees. And there are lizards. I haven't seen snakes yet. But lizards, I don't like it. When you have one of these nice garden boxes, you don't have to get down on your knees. It's very comfortable. You can easily garden by just bending over. My favorite kind of garden. I have one, too. So you have this gardener's box. We got it for you for Christmas and Allie liked it so much. They got one that we're going to take a tour of in a minute. And I certainly think if you're eight months pregnant, you're definitely not bending over. You're and also bending when over. you have a new baby, you're definitely not, bending, not over. bending over. So this is an accessible way to grow some healthy food for you and your baby while not breaking your back. Or organic yourself. food. We're growing organic food. You know, it, life goes back to the simple things. It, there's nothing better than just picking a tomato off of a vine that you've grown and eating Smelling it and making it, a salad. Eating it, yeah. making a salad, thinking about the work you did, creating it, watching nature grow. It's all wonderful things yeah. that you have when you have a garden. And when you have a box that makes it easier, that you don't have to get on your knees and hurt your back, it's so much better. Yeah, it's so good. Before we dive in, this is your quick PSA to wear sun protection in the garden, okay? We're in Florida. It's very sunny. It's June. It's hot. You do not want to get skin damage. I got melanoma at 34 years old because of sun damage. No one should go through what I went through. So wear sun protection. We've got hats. We've got long sleeves. We've got long pants. Cover as much of your body as possible and then sunscreen up when you can. Shall we? Shall we build a garden in three hours? Oh. And also wear sunglasses to protect your eyes. Um, sunglasses are like the modern day goggle, scientific goggle. You can get dirt in your eyes. You could end up with abrasions in your eyes if something spit, spits back into your eyes. So always wear glasses when you are gardening. Okay, we have three hours to do this before Allie gets home and before we have to go home. We've got everything we need. We've got plants, we've got soil. We're building garden containers. So let's get to it. And before we start, I want to show you the original box that inspired this garden. So here's the official before shot. My brother-in-law, Ken, cleared the entire space in his backyard, lined it with the pavers, and filled it with this beautiful white gravel, which I think is going to look so crisp against the cedar beds. Let's go check out the original bed they got that inspired this entire reno. So this is my sister, Allie. Allie, welcome to the Growing Joy family. Thanks. Or the Growing Joy family welcomes you. You are eight months pregnant. 
Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> How have you liked, and we're being blinded by the sun because your first raised bed from gardeners is indirect sun. So can you tell us about what you've used this bed for and all of the obviously insane tomatoes and harvest that you've had? Yes. So my husband and I got this for Christmas from mm -hmm. my family. We built it and started using it back in January. We planted tomatoes, as you can see. We have peppers and we had cucumbers back there, but they've all crispy. They've all died. Um, we have celery, kale. There was basil here, which is on its oh, last yeah, leg. Cilantro, which is also on its last leg. Um, what else was there? There was romaine at one point. So we've had a lot of fun with this. We've had a dream to have four of these since we built the first one in January. And we're so excited to be able to make that a reality today. I'm your garden fairy god sister. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, so we're going to actually take these plants out. We're going to harvest the rest of the tomatoes, take these plants out, and move this into the new garden farm area and just put some heat-resistant, tolerant, beautiful flowers for the summer because Allie is eight months pregnant. She's going to have a baby. I don't think you guys are going to be like working too hard in your garden in the first couple of months with baby girl on the way. So we're just going to have a really beautiful pink display to celebrate my niece. She's my first niece. I'm so excited to be an auntie. Um, so we're going to celebrate her with this new garden. So let's get to work and break this down uh, and get this party started. Awesome. Here we are harvesting all of the tomatoes off of the tomato plant first, and then we ripped the plants out of the box. We took all the trellises down. We were able to save one celery plant and one kale plant that we're going to replant in the new boxes, but everything else was pretty spent. My mom shoveled all the dirt into the wheelbarrow, so it made the box lighter so we could move it. We just took my sister's garden box down, harvested all of the leftover tomatoes. Quick tip. If you have green tomatoes, you can put them in a brown paper bag and that will help them ripen. So don't leave, if you're like breaking down a tomato plant at the end of the summer, don't leave the green ones on the vine, save them, put them in a brown paper bag and turn them into these delicious little perfect cherry boys. Mm. And now it is time for me to be your handy plant friend. It is time to assemble the beds. Allie and Ken dreamt of having four beds and they already had that first one. So we got three more and we had to assemble them. So you'll see this kind of took a village. <laughs> it was me. It was their handyman. Uh, my mom stepped in occasionally. But I have to say assembly isn't hard. It's just time consuming because there's a lot of screws. Make sure your power drill is assembled and charged. I did assemble my mom mom's bed by myself. My mom had the eight foot long one. These are all four foot long ones, but I was really happy to have the help. So if you can have the help, get it. But if you don't, you can also do this on your own. So these are the Gardner Supply Company Elevated Cedar Planter Boxes. I have to say, I was shocked at how fragrant the cedar was. Their entire backyard smelled like cedar. It was kind of amazing. And they came with everything you need to install and build the entire box. It ships to your house just in like a normal flat box. And you can either leave them as they are once you assemble them, or if you want to stain them darker or lighter, if you want to treat them, if you want to seal them, you can, but you don't need to. So as a reminder, here's the first before photo, the blank slate, and here is the after with the beds lined up in it before we put soil or plants in them. We chose to line the beds up two by two, which gave them plenty of space around each box for mobility and also for Allie's belly not to feel squeezed anywhere. Then it was time to fill them with raised bed mix by Espoma Organic. The bottom of the beds are slats of wood, so there are small holes between the slats for drainage. So the beds come with this gardener's felt that you put at the bottom of the box to prevent potting mix from falling out of the bottom. And then you fill them in. Each bed took about four to five cubic feet of potting mix. So we have assembled the beds in the last couple of hours and now it's the fun, the fun time. We're planting up these beds. Maria, why is it so important to use bag dirt versus the free dirt that's all around us? Yeah, great question, mom. So the dirt outside, particularly in Florida, the dirt is way too sandy. And it's dirt, right? That it's not sense. potting mix. It's sandy. It's filled with um, 
fungi and things that could attack the plants. It has unwanted pests. It has unwanted things. You need to, when you're, especially when you're, one of the benefits of gardening in raised beds is that you can control the soil. This also elevates it and protects it. So we're going to use Espoma's raised bed mix. This mix is specifically made for growing in raised beds like this. They also have potting mix for houseplants. They have in-ground bed mix. They have soil amendments. So we are going to dump this in. You want to dump that in sure. for me? So now we're going to add Espoma Organic Biotone. This is a beginner plant food. Uh, you add it when you plant your plants and it helps prevent transplant loss because it's got microbes and mycorrhizae that help the plants absorb water and establish faster. So it's about three cups per raised bed. I'm going to eyeball it. And then we're going to mix this in before we water the plants. And it's slow release. So every time you water the plants, it's going to get some nutrients into the root ball. All right. <laughs> Can you put too much of that in? Yeah, read the instructions. There's instructions right, based instructions. on how many cubic feet of soil you put biotone. It does smell. It smells a little bit. It's organic. It smells like manure. If you it want organic. Good. It smells like it's going to grow nice plants. Yeah, if you want organic, you're going to smell organic. That's right. So now let's... Organic perfume. <laughs> organic <laughs> perfume. So organic now perfume. let's... Wear gloves. Wear gloves. <laughs> space out the. Let's space out the plants before we pot everything up. Um, get them out of the containers and go from there. Okay, now are we going to put flowers on the part that they see from the lanai so that they have a pretty visual? Yeah, so that's a great question, Mom. So we have these caladiums from Proven Winners. My mom and I saw these at the store and loved them because they're heart-shaped and because they're pink. So my sister's having a girl, they're pink. We wanted to do a pink box. So I think we should plant the box of love. We've been nicknaming it because they're heart-shaped right. leaves here so that when they sit in the lanai, they, they can see our love. Pretty. Right, and then we'll put the vegetables yeah. next to it. Yeah, so let's space everything out and get a sense for that. Okay, let's space everything out. Great, so now it's time to plant everything up and space everything out. Before you start digging in the box, it is so important to space everything out first. You can either leave the plants in their pots the way we did, or you can take all the plants out of the pots but and then just lay them on top of the soil. It's so important because it gives you the aesthetic, and that's what's going to make sure it's cohesive. So this is a great example. My mom and I originally thought we were going to kind of monoplant each planter. So we were going to put all the hearts, the caladiums in one box. We were going to put all the veggies in another box. But once we started doing that, we realized it looked really lopsided and kind of wonky. And that's when we realized, oh, we should anchor all of the boxes with the pink caladiums and the pink um, plants and then have each bed have a special feature like the strawberry bed, the zucchini bed. But all of those beds have the anchor of these pink plants and the pink begonias all over the place. I'm so happy we ended up doing it this way because it felt so much more cohesive and beautiful. That's the difference between having a garden that's just you know, useful, like we're just growing as much as we can versus a garden that's really aesthetic and restorative and happy. Um, I love my mom's passion for her dunking tip when she plants up her plants. So I wanted to show you this demo that she did. Here, I have a beautiful proven winner's plant here that when you take it out of the pot, you notice the roots are lush but it also has a lot of beautiful little shoots. So when you look for plants, look for plants that have some shoots on it because it'll just keep you happier and happier. And I can't fit it in here. Do you have the big bowl? Yeah. Let me give it a little dip because I believe in I giving it. it a dip a little <laughs> bit so that it's nice and wet at the bottom. And now I'm gonna put it in this nice, loose, glorious, delicious dirt for my plant. And then just cover it up, pack it down, cover it up. And it's going to live very happy here with all the strawberries. The strawberries are here. I'm going to throw a little bit of water on it just to make sure it's really happy. And here's another one that I started planting. It needs a little bit of a dip on the bottom. Okay because it, we are going to water them with 
We are going to water them with a hose, but you can never give a plant too much water when you plant it in because, you know, it gets a shock being transplanted and everybody likes a good drink, especially in Florida. You need a good drink of water. We figured out we're going, we're anchoring all four of the boxes with these gorgeous proven winners, caladiums and uh, begonias. Then on the outside, we have some, what is this called? Lantana. Um, we have Lantana in yellow and this beautiful pink variety. We're doing mint and watermelon in here because watermelon is my sister's favorite, uh, I guess, fruit, melon. Yes. yes so. Doing herbs in that bed. We're doing strawberries in that bed. That was her special request. And then this bed is zucchini, but mostly just love. But I just love that our little pink hearts are going to be looking at her and her baby. All right. Another thing is when you're planting everything up, make sure that you take your plant tags and you stick them next to the plants, because especially if they're not plants that are flowering, you're going to forget what's growing and it's going to get you overwhelmed. So here's the dramatic reveal. I wanted to be extra. So I asked my sister to put on a blindfold and this is me walking her out to show her what we made for her. This is five. Okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Turn around. Okay. Ready? Okay. Allie, are you ready to see your new garden? Yes. Ooh! Oh my goodness! This looks incredible. Yeah. Okay, wow. so come back here. So, oh no, you stand there. So, oh my gosh, I love these. These are our love letter for your new baby. They're oh heart shaped leaves because we love her, and what they're are these pink. Called? They're called caladiums. I love these. Then, so beautiful. This is your strawberry patch. Oh, I've been wanting so you can have strawberries, something mm -hmm. sweet. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, this is your herb patch. So you have basil, you have rosemary, rosemary, and something else over there. Oh, and you planted the celery and the kale. From yeah. The from the old one. Garden. Amazing. Um, this is apparently, uh, this is called lantana. It's, um, drought tolerant and pollinator friendly. So hopefully you'll get some nice pollinators in your garden cool. bed. Hopefully it'll last through the Florida heat. Yes. I could not believe this, but so shortly after we planted that lantana, as we were watering the garden and talking, a beautiful butterfly, I think it's a monarch, flew over and landed on the lantana and hung out with us forever. So we're not kidding when we say this is a really pollinator friendly plant. This, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. This is one zucchini. So we only planted one zucchini because it's going to take over the bed. Okay. And then this is your angudia patch. Angudia oh watermelon. My gosh. So yes. watermelon's Allie's favorite plant. So you have watermelons on the side and they'll creep. And then we also have mint. So the mint is going to take over the box, but we thought that the mint and the watermelon will just kind of like creep around. Ooh. And... We hope it brings you and your baby lots of joy. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Maria. Love you. You're the best. Get in sister. here, mom. Mom's got the gimbal. You can put that phone down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go over here. For the memories. <laughs> For the memories. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much to Gardeners Espoma and Proven Winners for helping me make my <laughs> sister's dreams come true. So. Thank you so Yay. much, Mom and Maria. You guys are the best. This is incredible. I can't wait to meet you, little baby. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.